This dear friends is an implant dentist dream come true. It's a full arch, fully digital implant level restoration that we have fabricated using the most precise digital impression system. This gives us immense control and absolute accuracy every single time. But what is the kind of equipment that you need to scan cases such as this? You guessed it right. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some basic armamentarium that you need to do implant level scans with your intraoral scanners. I'll start by quickly reviewing the basic components of a physical or analog implant impression protocol. These here are called impression copings which help us to transfer the three-dimensional position of the implant to the stone model. These can be of the closed tray or the open tray variety and have specific indications to justify their use. These components on the other hand are called lab analogs which are replicas of the implant placed inside the patient's jaw and they just replicate the implant inside the stone model. Both impression posts and analogs are always system specific which means that a particular implant system will have specific impression posts and analogs. Now moving over to the talk of the town, implant level digital impressions. We use something called as a scan body which is just substituting an impression post and helps to serve the exact same purpose of transferring the implant position to the CAD software. These here are the digital analogs which just like lab analogs that you saw earlier replicate the implant inside the 3D printed model. Just like impression posts and lab analogs, scan bodies and digital analogs are also system specific. They are autoclavable which means that you can reuse them just like their analog counterparts. Scan bodies and analogs can be sourced for directly from the implant companies or also certain third party manufacturers. So now that you have some clarity on the various components used in the digital implant workflow, I also would like to share certain crucial points to consider when using scan bodies. The scan bodies that you use should be isometric. In simple words, they should have multiple flat aligning surfaces that will help the technician to align the virtual scan body in the lab and give you an accurate passive implant restoration. While placing the scan bodies in the mouth, one of these aligning surfaces must be on the buckle side for easy access in the CAD software. As you can see here, the technician aligns the virtual scan body with the scan and designs the restorations in the CAD software. Once the scan bodies are seated onto the implant, it is crucial to take an IOP and confirm complete seating. There should not be any air gaps between the implant connection and the scan body. While scanning the scan bodies, always make sure that the coronal portion of the scan bodies are recorded cleanly without any voids, distortion or ghost images as this area has some critical aligning surfaces. Without a good scan of this area, you will not get an accurate passively fitting implant prosthesis. As you can see in this case here, there is a lot of distortion on the aligning surfaces of the scan body which will make this scan absolutely useless for the lab. This on the other hand is a case which has good definition on the aligning surfaces and is perfectly good to go inside the lab. The classical material that scan bodies have been made of has been peak. However, since these are radiolucent, hybrid scan bodies are now used which have a titanium base and a peak suprastructure making it easily visible on the IOPA and making them very easy to scan as well. Some newer titanium scan bodies are also available these days and can be sourced very easily. Another important aspect which no one really talks about is how do you sterilize these scan bodies. As you all know, the standard of sterilization is autoclaving. Now most of the European scan bodies are all autoclavable at 121 degrees. The universal protocol however is 134 degrees. So once you autoclave these at 134 for a few times, the scan bodies will distort. 
This distortion is not enough to be seen with the naked eye but suddenly you start having misfits with your restorations. In order to avoid this problem, we must use the correct sterilization protocols. An alternative method is to cold sterilize them to maintain the structure of your scan bodies for a longer period. But be ready to change the scan bodies after some time since they will distort no matter what. It's also very important to train your ancillary staff in your clinic and make them aware of these little but very important aspects. So that was a short summary on the basic armamentarium you need to do implant level scans with your intraoral scanners. This will help you achieve maximum accuracy every time you scan. Don't forget to watch our upcoming videos on the present and future of dentistry.